They say the American market is a gold mine for European entrepreneurs, but how do you stand out in the competitive landscape? I'm Christina Robafe Broadus, the American Market Alchemist, and I believe that anyone can write their U.S. success story to amplify their influence and scale their impact beyond the borders of their home market. In this podcast, you'll hear inspiring stories and practical advice from American market experts and European entrepreneurs who are making an impact in the U.S. Tune in each week for a dose of motivation and tactical tips to build your influence and visibility in the world's largest market so you stand out, attract more clients, and turn your European business into American gold. Now, let's dive in. In this episode of the American Market Alchemist, I'm talking to special guest Thibaut Brioland, who is the CEO and co-founder of Human Linker, which is personalized prospecting reinvented with AI. Very interesting conversation, A, because the product is super interesting for anyone who is trying to build their business, and that means prospecting but also because they are doing some exciting things in the U.S. They're going to be expanding even more into the U.S. probably in the next year. And we're going to talk about, you know, what influenced their decision to go after U.S. customers, the challenges that they faced when they were doing that, the differences in marketing to their American prospects versus to their European prospects, and also the value of leveraging networks and investors who are in the U.S., but who are from your home country, in this case, uh, France for Thibaut, so leveraging all the French networks that are already in the U.S. Very exciting uh, episode, uh, very interesting conversation. I hope that you'll get a lot out of it, and let's go ahead and dive into this interview with Thibaut Brioland from Human Linker. Welcome back to another episode of the American Market Alchemist, where my mission is to share the success stories of European entrepreneurs doing great things in the U.S. market, among other things. And today I'm here with Thibaut Brioland of Human Linker. Uh, Thibaut is the CEO and co-founder of Human Linker, which is all about personalized prospecting reinvented with AI. Um, which actually sounds like something I need to look into just for my own business. So we might have to talk about that as well. Um, anyway, Thibaut, very happy to have you. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thanks for the invitation, Christina. Yeah, no, my pleasure. I saw that you guys are doing a lot of interesting things in the U.S. We met up at, at Viva Tech um, in Paris, had a little chat about uh, what you guys are doing in the U.S. market. A lot of exciting things that uh, we're going to be talking about And so, yeah, maybe just to start off, could I ask you to tell us a little bit about you and your company? Of course. Uh, So so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Human Linker. I'm 31 years old. I'm French. And uh, and Human Linker is a European sales tech based in France. We Mm -hmm. are actually a bit more than 10 people in the company. Mm -hmm. Uh, We raised 4 million euros since the beginning of the of our journey and congratulations uh, we, uh, thanks uh it's only the beginning but uh we yeah. invested a lot of money in into uh, our technology with bridging mm-hmm. data and generative ai to uh, um, to, to enable uh, the sales performance uh, and basically we are using uh, all this technology to um to uh, help sales people uh better uh, interact with uh, their potential leads and, and potential customer Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the, the 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 world we are using it's personalization you know so we yeah. are using personalization at scale and uh so i have right. a sales background uh before you linker so i i jumped in the in the sales ecosystem in 2011 uh, i was a sales people in door to door yeah I was <laughs> selling, uh, uh, doors shutters uh and uh and stuff like that yeah in, of France, uh, so it was uh, pretty hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, for me, uh, so it was like the the sales uh, the sales school. Yeah. But accelerated, and uh, and uh, after, so I made a, a business school, uh, but I I did uh, everything in apprenticeship. Mm-hmm, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I worked in in different companies between my studies. 
uh, first in the in as a, the first salespeople in the in the marketing tech uh, startup, and then uh, at Mercedes-Benz Friends. Uh, mm. So all the time working on the uh, marketing things and uh, and the tech, and um, it was very um, helpful for me for this current situation because I uh, I used to prospect a lot. Yeah. And, uh, since my uh, 18 years old, yeah. and uh, and actually the, the 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 big topic that we are tackling at Human Linker it's personalized prospecting. Right. AI. So I uh, when I worked as a sales rep, uh, I uh, I felt the, the the pain about prospecting, about searching, a lot mm. of information about the, the the prospect, how to uh, be more impactful when yeah. uh, during the the outreach, etc. And uh, and so uh, so after the, the business school, I had the chance to work in a very um, uh, ambitious uh, company. It was mm -hmm. a, a hat tech company, also okay. uh, in the US, yeah. with uh, an office in San Francisco and Paris. Uh, I was part of the ten first employees of the company. Okay. I left the the company we were like fifty. Uh, it was very. Um, uh, uh, very growing fast uh, developments and mm. uh, so it, it uh, helped me to understand how to uh, to 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 run a business how to yeah. deploy the business uh, not only in France but but in an international way right and um, and after that I took a break uh, to travel a bit in the US yeah. okay. uh, in Australia in Asia and I started to uh, to wonder about the, the, the my future uh, my future adventure and, uh, mm -hmm, yeah. to, uh, to work as a um, uh, as a revenue expert for a venture capital firm, mm. and uh, after six months of uh, developing my company, I had the opportunity to create another company. Right. Was Human Linker because okay. uh, I worked for uh, I worked for um, um, a Swiss venture capital firm, mm -hmm. and the founding partner of the of the fund introduced me to Regis, my actual partner. Uh, right. Yeah. He was also one of the best partner of the of the venture capital firm for all the, the tech developments, all the Got it. things. So uh, we had the the engineering team, the, yeah. the 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 investment funds, and the go to market team. Because in yeah. my company, uh, I I worked with uh, three four people uh, dedicated to go to the, to the go to market. Yeah. And uh, and so it it was. At the beginning of the COVID crisis, and we were wondering about the future of sales, how to use mm. AI to improve sales performance with a more qualitative way of working right. with personalization. Yeah. And, um, and so we, uh, it, it was at the beginning only uh, just a, a side project. Yeah. But uh, actually, uh, uh, it's, it's not the side project anymore because uh, <laughs> I'm 300% uh, involved in the, in the project. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and yeah, it was the, the beginning of the, of the journey and uh, it was pretty, pretty exact, 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 uh, yeah. exciting. And, uh, and yeah. Okay. No, but yeah, it, it sounds very exciting and, and it's really yeah. interesting to see how your, you know, your background, you know, it sounds like you've done a little bit of everything that is necessary to really do prospection really well. You know, you've, you've been out there in the trenches with the door to store sales, which by the way, um, I, I don't know which company you were working for, but I about a year ago replaced my door on my apartment and okay. I got it from the guy literally coming and knocking on the door and saying, Hey, we sell, you know, reinforced doors. Are you interested? And I was like, you're right at the right moment because that's what I'm looking for one. Um, so it can work. You know, I'm sure you probably had about a million rejections before you got a client, but you know, that that's part of prospecting. It's getting out there and it's knocking on a bunch of doors literally or virtually um, and, and trying to find the right ones. And if you guys can make it easier to, I would say, find the right ones and to do that in a personalized way, uh, then that is definitely going to be a very valuable service for a lot of businesses, I think. So, yeah, congratulations on uh, coming up with with that idea. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I was uh, already involved in the personalized personalized way of uh, prospecting and selling. Yeah, because uh, like uh, to to give a quick tip to the to the audience. Uh, Please do. The, the the door. 
And uh, if the, there is n n nobody at the, in, inside the house, yeah. I the, the the name of the um, of the of the owner. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I take les passes blanches in in yeah. France. Yeah. Uh, identify uh, the name and identify the phone number. And um, during the like the, the prospecting session, I took information about the house, about mm. like uh, information I can uh, identify. Yeah. Uh, order to personalize my call calling session nice and then uh, it was very interesting for me to uh, the, to be uh, very different from uh, other like uh, call centers uh, uh, yeah. and uh, other uh, sales rep uh, who, who doesn't uh, see any uh, like uh, information about yeah. the house etc so right. uh, yeah. uh, interesting to use this kind of uh, technique and yeah. Uh, so yeah I, I used to prospect a lot and when you feel the pain I think it's better to create a company and because uh, you already uh, identify the pain leave the pain and mm. uh, of course you want to, to find the right solution right yeah find the solution for, for yourself and for other people and then you can turn it into a business which is I feel like is the the best kind of business because you've like you said, you felt that pain, you identified it and you said, well, I'm yeah. surely not the only one with this pain. So let me fix it. Right. Yeah. Now you, um, yeah, you, you mentioned, um, you know, a lot of work in the uh, travel in the U S and, uh, internationally. And I know that you guys, like we said, you've got customers in the U S already. Yeah. Now, what, two questions here. Was that intentional? Like, did you set out and say, we want to go and get American customers? Um, or was there some kind of trigger that you saw an opportunity and you said, hey, let's go in this direction because yeah. there's this opportunity? How did you make that decision mm -hmm. to get those U.S. customers? Yeah, uh, I think to, yeah, to, to answer to the question first, I think it's, uh, it's based off... Um, on based on uh, like uh, market maturity because uh, mm -hmm. we are working on big data and AI and I think like 16 months ago it wasn't the the, the same uh, maturity in Europe as mm. in the US. Right. That's why for us um, we we started no, so we we didn't start it with the US because first we created sure. our entire platform connected to the CRM system because I mm -hmm. think it's interesting to. Uh, go back to the to the beginning of the project. So we created a platform right. connected to the CRM system like HubSpot, Salesforce, but mm -hmm. it was it was difficult for us to deploy this technology internationally because mm. uh, you need to focus on like uh, less than five, uh, 500 employees companies. Okay. You don't have any certification for uh, to connect to the CRM system, etc. Right. Why? Uh, like in January 2023, we decided to, so we make a big decision uh, to create yep. part of our products available directly on internet, 24 right. hours on 24, seven days uh, uh, per week uh, yep. and, um, and uh, available without any CRM system connection. Okay. Because, uh, so it's, it's called like the product led sales motion, sure. you know, PLG. And uh, so the, the product is available in self-service. And that's why uh, we, because in the same time, we bought a company dedicated right. to disk personality analysis. And disk is very, uh, is very, uh, is well known in, in the US. Yeah. Because it's like a, a well-used framework for understand personality, etc. So that's why yeah. we, we started to deploy the technology with the product-led Mm. Uh, motion and because of the disc as well and the 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 higher maturity about uh, AI topics uh, right, and also yeah. the quality of the copywriting engine um, we built uh, right. because it was better on the, on the English language mm, and, sure. um, and so that's why one year ago we uh, we launched the products uh, on the market and the yeah. first focus was the US. So we worked okay. with uh, with uh, American influencers. Mm. Uh, we um, we were uh, very uh, well positioned in the right. in the ranking, uh, sales technologies ranking, etc. Mm. Uh, create awareness in the US and uh, and yeah, to find the, the first customers. 
Yeah. Okay. No, very interesting. And actually, yeah, you mentioned how you um, became known to your clients in the U.S. And I think that that's a question that a lot of um, a lot of the people that I work with have is, all right, I'm going into this market. It's a huge market. There's a ton of competition. How do I stand out? And so you, you mentioned that you worked with influencers. Were there any other strategies or techniques? How did you, how did you guys get in front of you, your American prospects? How did you become visible to them? Yeah, I think we, we are working on two different strategies. So first, mm-hmm. it's product led motion. So it's yeah. like automatic customers who paid with credit cards, etc. There is no meetings, no sales mm-hmm. interactions, etc. So first. To, uh, to be very impactful uh, on this uh, sales motion, you need to be very visible on the internet. Yeah. So right. like LinkedIn, LinkedIn influence is very powerful to, to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, be uh, aware on the, on the sales technologies ranking is very interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, so we also invested uh, money in uh, like uh, paid ads. Okay. Uh, like uh, LinkedIn ads, etc. But the costs are very uh, are, was too high for us. Mm, sure. uh, because we are, uh, of course, monitoring like the the, the cost of acquisition uh, right. of of the leads, etc. So it was too uh, too expensive for us. Yeah. So we decided to stop to to invest uh, money in paid ads for the moment in the US. Mm. And uh, like uh, LinkedIn influence was the the best for us. To create awareness about, uh, yeah. about uh, on human linker and to uh, attract some potential uh, user. In the same time, we we worked on the the outbound sales motion mm-hmm. using first uh, our technology, of course, right. yeah. uh, to uh, to be um, to to interact with potential uh, customer in the US. And it was a different, completely different targeting, mm. targeting like. Uh, Head of sales, VP of sales of companies, like from um, ten to hundred sales rep in the company. Okay. Using HubSpot or Salesforce, and uh, okay. it was like the, a different way of working because uh, the, the 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 main uh, goal was to uh, to get a meeting and yeah. uh, and to sign uh, like uh, biggest uh, biggest contract than the product led motion. Right. So okay. We, we tried the, the two different uh, uh, techniques and uh, and motion, and uh, actually uh, in the US the, the product led is very uh, performing at the moment. Mm. We don't have like uh, a big big sales team to to deploy for the moment big deals in right. the US, and we need to be very focused. So mm. uh, so yeah. So the PLG motion is very global with a big right. focus on US and UK. Sure. Uh, because the, the markets are very uh, uh, mature as well. And uh, mm. for the sales led motion in 2024, we are already focused on like mm, 85% on Europe, 15% on the on the US. And mm. it will be completely different in 2025. Okay. Because as you know, we are looking to raise funds to, uh, yeah. to expand our business in the U.S., but I think you're, we're going to talk about And we're going to talk about, yeah, the, the plans for the fundraising and, and expanding business. Um, but I would say before we look into the future, we're, we're going to stay a little bit in the, in the past here. Um, and what were some of the challenges that you faced um, when, you know, going into the U.S., uh, trying to get those uh, American customers, getting visible in front of them, getting their attention, getting the meetings, uh, yeah, what were some of the challenges that um, the American market presented for you and, and your team? I think the, 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 the biggest challenge is the size of the market because mm. you need to identify your ideal customer profile, the personas, and it's, it could be completely different from the PLG perspective to the sales perspective because mm. it's very, very different. Right, yeah. Uh, for example, if you want to try and to find a Product-led users uh, and uh, and customers. Uh, it uh, it's better to target, for example, small business owners, decision makers who have the credit card in 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 the hand. Yeah. Uh, instead of uh, sales rep who can create the account, try the product, but they cannot uh, pay mm-hmm. with the credit card because uh, they don't have the the access to, uh, right. to the, the company credit cards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
So mm. I think yeah, it was first like the targeting because the market is very big. Uh, so that's why we we started to identify the the best cities for us for the the LinkedIn ad strategy and the Google mm. ad strategy to focus on very specific uh, specific cities as yeah. uh, for example New York, Boston, Austin, um, uh, a bit on LA and San Francisco, for example. Yeah. Uh, so we invested, uh, of course, less money in Miami, Atlanta, etc. Because of the self-trap repartition inside the country. So we okay. identify this kind of things and the, the, the company size, etc. in the different cities. Right. Uh, uh, of course, it was better for us to invest money uh, inside like uh, tech cities, of course. Sure. Um, uh, and uh, so I think it was, yes, the, the, the first challenge. The second one, it was the, the, the cost of acquisition, a very high yeah. with in ads. That's why we decided to to stop and to uh, invest money in uh, more for, powerful uh, uh, acquisition channels. Mm, right. Uh, uh, and uh, and as well, one of the big challenge I think it's to identify the best uh, influencers. Mm. We work with our main competitors in the US because we right. have a competitor in the US. Yeah. Not so much in Europe, to be honest, but in okay. the US we have like like five, five, yeah. six main competitors, uh, but the market is very, it's very, it's very big. Right. Uh, so to identify the right influencers who share the, the same values, mm. uh, to, uh, to talk about the company, about the brand, about the values that we are bringing to the market. Right. It's not very easy to do. And uh, I think um, there is a lot of scam in, in, in this industry as well. Sure. Uh, because okay, uh, you have uh, I don't know, five hundred likes on the post or yeah. fifty comments, but uh, it's could uh, generate zero in terms of revenue. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think so. That's why we we started to invest to try to test and learn a lot of things there, and uh, and uh, and to be honest, uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, mm -hmm. I have the chance to be. Um, uh, to be uh, uh, advised by uh, Emmanuel Benoliel, uh, who mm. is the previous chief marketing officer at Aircall. Yeah. And uh, she was in charge of the US expansion at Aircall. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, made a, a good job. <laughs> yeah, and, I, mean, uh, I might have to get her onto the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can, uh, like the, the Put COVID. us in contact, yeah. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah. so that's why, yeah. Uh, I think we have uh, like a good advisor investor to help us to expand our business there, mm. and uh, and the, the the market is very reactive to our right. offer. To be honest, right? So yeah. And do do you feel like it's the the market is more reactive in in the U.S. versus here in France or Europe in general, or or no real difference? Uh, I think the the best things in the U.S. it's that uh, on the sales led motion. Mm. The, the velocity of the sales cycle is two time uh, uh, two time uh, uh, like twice as fast perhaps yeah, as fast mm. as uh, in in Europe okay uh, right in France of course mm. uh, so I think it's one of the main interesting things about uh, about the US because like the the, the level, level of maturity of the right. makers are higher than in uh, in France, for, of course. Mm. Uh, less fear about uh, making mistakes as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think it's one of the the best things in the US because mm. they are able to take risk, try things, and to take to test and learn, etc. But in France, most of the time, it could be difficult. Uh, a lot of uh, people involved in the deal. You you mm. need to talk yeah. and talk with. Uh, Hundred percent at, uh, at right. the company to uh, to uh, to sign the deal, etc. So yeah, yeah it's it's, uh, it's really interesting to work with American people. Mm, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's true. That's something that 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 I often hear uh, from you know the the entrepreneurs that I've interviewed who are going who are in the U.S. or going into the U.S. and that's one of the the key advantages that they mention. They say, well, you know, here we show up, we do our sales pitch. 
the guy decide or the the woman decides, all right, let's try it out. And, and the, the decision can go very quickly. They said, but the flip side of that is also the decision to stop working together can also go very quickly. But but basically it comes down to things just happen faster. And at least that way, you know, if you're going in the right direction or not to, compared to maybe yeah, and I, and I, I work with companies here in, in France and Europe. And so I know the the 18 month sales cycle where you've got to meet with one person, then meet with another person, then meet with five other person. They've got to all meet together and they get back in. And it's just a, a much longer decision process, right? Yeah, to be honest, for, for startup like us, it could be very boring, you know, because yeah. uh, it's a uh, start and stop all the time. That's yeah, why right. we, we are working on the product-led motion because yeah. it would be possible to earn cash directly yeah. with uh, users, etc. with a very, very uh, uh, small uh, decision process because yeah. it's automatic decision process. You create yeah. the account, you try the part of the product, and then you're going to decide if you're going to buy or try or not. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's complementary and I think... Uh, actually, inside the SaaS ecosystem, it's mm. uh, one of the biggest and more important decisions to have like the, the two different models, uh, right. both TLG and sales-led motion, yeah. Uh, uh, because yeah, of the uh, of the problematic of the of the of the cash of the of the runway. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You've got you've got to get the cash in, you know, either through getting in those clients or raising funds, but you've got to get that cash so that you can get it out there and then also maybe start developing, you know, maybe starting with something smaller and easier access. And that might not be where you want to go finally. That's not maybe not your final destination, but it's the way that it it helps you to take off so that you can continue working towards the final destination. So um, you mentioned something about, uh, right. So the, the CEO, I think it was of, of air call who was, uh, advising you. And I, I know that earlier you mentioned, um, before we started recording this podcast that you're, that you're working with a lot of, um, French entrepreneurs and French networks in the U S uh, networks, investors, advisors, things like this. In, yeah. in your opinion, what is the value of, let's say, a, a French entrepreneur? We'll take this as an example. French entrepreneur looking to the U.S. and reaching out to these French networks, these French connections, let's say, um, in, in the U.S. to help them get their business off the ground. I think first, uh, I think it's important to understand that when you are creating a company, you need to... Uh... Uh, you need to interact with people who already made the job mm, uh, yeah. uh, in France and every, everywhere in the world. Yeah. Uh, and the the most important thing is to uh, to uh, identify and to uh, don't reproduce mistakes that are already made. Mm. Learn uh, from like, others' mistakes, right? Instead of making them yourself, right? Of course. And most of the mm. time, it could be dangerous because you you're gonna meet. People who don't have the startup uh, experiences and yeah. only worked with uh, inside a big corporation, etc. So they didn't mm. feel the market and they didn't know how to create the product. So they have like the, the vision how how it uh, it works. But right. uh, if it's uh, it could be uh, very dangerous to uh, listen uh, uh, this kind of uh, of advices. So mm. one of the, the the best things we made at Humanica is to uh, it it's to work with uh, business angels because yep. at, the, at the capital actually we have two different um, uh, investment funds and mm -hmm. five business angels all right. uh, okay. as veterans, uh, previous CEO of uh, uh, very um, uh, prestigious tech companies etc. Mm. And uh, it's very interesting because yeah. It's helped us to uh, avoid some mi mistakes on the market. Yeah. And of course, when you want to expand your business in, uh, in foreign countries, right. as the US, it could be interesting to, uh, to understand, yeah. okay, because, because, for example, if you receive advice from an American founder, mm. it's not the same, it's not the same uh, uh, reality as yeah. a, a foreigner, you know? So, yeah. for example... Uh, if you um, 
you you had a, a career in Paris during I don't know 20 years, and uh, one day you take your luggage and you go to to New York City to deploy yeah. your business. It's not the same if you are an American citizen and you go from uh, San Francisco to New York. You know, right? Yeah. You, don't, you don't have the same network. It's not the same language, etc., yeah. etc. So I think right. it's interesting to receive this kind of of advices to mm. avoid mistakes and to have like. Uh, a, a network of uh, foreigners in the U.S. Uh, and uh, yeah, to 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 benefit benefits from help mm. from networks, etc., etc. Right. But I think you, when you are founders and you want to expand the business, you need to both interact with uh, foreigners, yeah. French, uh, German people, etc., etc. Yeah. But with local people as well, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. it's. Yeah. It's the it's the entire uh, strategy uh, works. Yeah, right. It's also like take just taking the best of all of the worlds. And like you said, if if you're a foreign entrepreneur going into the U.S., it's interesting to have the experience of other foreign entrepreneurs because they face specific challenges. There's the question of cultural differences and how do you understand and how do you interpret certain actions or certain reactions from American clients or American investors, you know, and if you're looking at the the behavior of the Americans through your French eyes and your French culture, you, you may mi misinterpret that and that can create big mistakes um, in your decisions where if you have someone who's able to almost um, decipher or decode and say, well, this is what they said, but you know, from my experience, this is this is what it really means, and this is what you need to be careful of. Then that can be, you know, just very insightful and super helpful for helping you to understand. You know, what are the codes? How do I play this game in a in a country and a language and a culture that is foreign to me, but that I really want to make it uh, in? And and so, how are these um, these networks? How how have they helped you in the past, or how are they helping you? Are there any? Um, I guess if you want to name drop any people or networks that could be useful for the listeners. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm in, in interaction with French founders, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, French founder. I'm gonna join the, the ecosystem uh, very soon. Okay, because great. They're already participating, participating uh, during the, at the yeah. at the lunch of her French founders, and some of our actual investors are part of the of this network. Okay, uh, I've got a couple of me. clients in French founders actually. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's a good network. Yeah, of course. Mm. And uh, in the same time, we have uh, Stan Quignard, uh, the the former uh, mm. US CEO of uh, S4M, as right. Flocker. Uh, with the um, president of the French Tech in Miami. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have also uh, Nicolas Cazeneuve, uh, previous CEO of uh, Easy Movie, based in mm. uh, San Francisco. Uh, there are, there is providing us uh, a lot of advices about U.S. expansion, about entrepreneurship, uh, mm. uh, and uh, and very helpful. Uh, in the same time, we have Johan Stern, uh, French entrepreneur. In, the, in California as well, president of the French Tech in LA. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, we are we have the chance to receive a lot of uh, advices from this kind of uh, experienced people. And in the same time, I talk about Emmanuel. Uh, she wasn't the CEO, but she was the CMO, Chief Marketing okay. Officer. Okay, CMO, right? Yeah. and uh, she was in charge of uh, US expansion because, as you probably know, Aircall it's a French company. Yeah. But we active in the U.S. Uh, I think with the the biggest part of uh, its turnover in the U.S. on the mm. markets. That's why Emmanuel uh, deep dive a lot in the in the U.S. markets to identify uh, the different market ma marketing channel to invest yeah. on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very helpful for me to uh, to um, to drive how we are working with marketing actually mm -hmm. and to, uh, invest. Uh, uh, money at a good time on the good channels inside the good countries. Mm. Because, uh, as uh, we discussed, uh, US expansion is uh, is very expensive. Yeah, yeah, lot. very costly. And, uh, so yeah, so I think we, so that's why we need to uh, to invest money at the best time. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think it's important to avoid uh, 
big, big mistakes. Yeah. And avoid burning all your cash before yeah. you, you know, get the cash in. And yeah, you mentioned about, you know, marketing um, to American clients. And I don't know, are there any major differences that you have noticed in terms of the way that maybe you're going to be marketing to your clients here in Europe versus the way that you market to your clients in the U.S.? Um, yes, I think uh, customer testimonials is, uh, is very impactful and uh, mm. very useful in the same time because yeah. most of the time in the, in the U.S., uh, it's uh, very focused on KPI metrics and uh, like uh, use cases with uh, customer from the same industry, etc. Mm. honest, it's of course the same in Europe because uh, at the moment, it's uh, it's more difficult than ever to uh, sign a deal if you don't have any uh, references yeah. and uh, return of investments. Yeah. But I think in the US, it's uh, it's the, the maximum of uh, of um, of, uh, of impact about this kind of uh, uh, like uh, return of investment measurement. Yeah. Okay, right. So very, very, very concrete and very, very measurable yeah. um, benefits, let's say. So yeah, it's it's not enough just to say we've got this great thing and we're the best and we're, you know, all this marketing, blah, 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 let's say. Um, you've got to have the, the numbers to back up what you're saying yeah. and, and that's going to make the difference. Yeah. And I, and right. I see, for example, uh, because at Human Linker, we already focus on like the reply rates in outbound yeah. because it's very... Uh, very very low due to the like uh, over solicitation of uh, yeah. decision makers. And for example, when you ask to uh, European people or French uh, people, like the the reply rate in his outbound strategy, you're gonna have this kind of answer. Uh, I don't know. I don't measure the reply rates. I only measure the the open rate. I know it's not very high, but and when you talk to an American people, say. Yeah. Okay, my reply rate is one percent. Is shit. I want to try a solution, <laughs> uh, and uh, I think it's two different way of working. It's more yeah. direct for American people. They are uh, like recognizing the 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 failures and yeah. uh, uh, and not the French people most of the time. You know. Mm. Yeah. Very very interesting insight. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. It's like you know what this what you know what's your sales rate or what's your response rate or whatever yeah, like you said he's going to be honest he's like yeah it's one percent it's crap that's why i'm talking to you because i want to fix this problem yeah. um and, and there's no shame in admitting that it's that it's a poor performance because you're working on improving that performance yeah. and that's what counts it's you don't have to be good from the start but you have to get started and then improve from there whereas i, I do agree that yes yeah, so sometimes it's uh Perhaps here in France, we're more hesitant to mm -hmm. admit that we're doing something and it's failing, yeah. um, even if, you know, because we, we want it to succeed, of course, but there's maybe a little less uh, stigma or, or shame to say, hey, I'm doing this. It's not working, but I'm, I'm trying to fix it. Yeah, yeah that's true. right. And so what are your what are your plans for the future in the U.S.? Because I know you guys are, are expanding. You're doing some really exciting things coming up. Yeah. Uh, what's in the future for Human Linker in the US? Um, so first, we're going to invest more money uh, inside uh, for marketing uh, mm. from September to December to try new uh, new marketing strategies in order to uh, to um, to to win new potential opportunities there. Uh, mm. Focus on the on the product led motion. Uh, we're gonna I'm I'm gonna put my head of sales uh, as the like international leaders in charge of US expansion to mm -hmm. continue to find potential opportunities, but with a really laser focus uh, on very specific ICP and yeah. not the biggest company of the market because we already, for example, um, invested a, a money inside like a US certification. It's it's called SOC2, mm. uh, and it's very uh, important for uh, like, like data protection, yeah. et, cetera, et cetera, privacy. So we already invested money uh, in this kind of certification. Mm -hmm. And uh, in um, like for the, the US, US expansion. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my head of sales uh, on this international growth at the end of the year. Mm. And I think one of the biggest... Uh, 
and more most important things for us is going to be like the like the office opening uh at the during the yeah the first quarter of 2025 mm, uh, yeah it would be uh, possible to put our luggage in new york okay uh, um, new york or miami i don't know because i yeah. think more it's it's easier for us to work in the in the east coast for the moment because yeah. of the, the like the of the market uh, because of the uh the different time slots etc mm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's only a six-hour difference from yeah. East yeah, Coast yeah. to France. Yeah, much yeah. much easier than California, which is a nine-hour difference, and yeah. Yeah, it, it makes it hard. Be, yeah, it would be difficult. So to keep the like the the same uh, interaction between the teams, etc. Because mm. uh, uh, in my previous experience, I had uh, this uh, this opportunity to talk with uh, colleagues in the in the in the West Coast, etc. Yeah. It's difficult to find time to to be in interaction yeah uh, so yeah so i think it's going to be the the best opportunity for us i don't know if it's going to be uh uh all year long in the us or not but yeah. uh, of course we're going to put some uh, people uh both european people and american people in the field yeah. for us at human linker it could be mm. for uh, new york city uh, and uh and yeah so but but first of all i think the the next challenge for us to um to deploy this strategy in the US is to mm. uh to um like uh, close the, the next uh, fundraising fundraising round at the end of the yeah. year. So yeah. we want to raise between seven to uh, fifteen million uh, uh dollars with mm -hmm. uh, like uh US or UK um uh investment funds. Yeah of course be better for us. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I think we need to okay. uh, to earn uh, more cash from customers and yeah. more cash from uh, investment funds in order to to have the the amount of money to invest in this kind of big markets. You know, yeah. because you can if you don't have the if you don't have enough budget to do it, it could be difficult to uh, right. to to make the difference between uh, the other competitors. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So we have okay. uh, uh, several mi milestones to uh, to um, to achieve uh, to hit to, to between now and then. Strategy. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. No. Very interesting. And and I've got um if you if you're interested I've got uh, if you're kind of hesitating between New York and Florida, um I've got two people who are in charge of attracting businesses to both New York and to Florida, I can put you in touch with those two people and they, maybe they can help you uh, make the decision of where you want to go. Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll put you in contact with those people. Right. Okay. Um, Tebow, thank you very much for, for sharing your, your adventure all the way from uh, knocking door to door to sell doors um, all the way now to uh, maybe looking at opening up your first offices in the U.S. Congratulations on that journey. Uh, very impressive. And yeah, I'll be looking forward to um, seeing what uh, your next steps in your U.S. adventure look like. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Christina, for the invitation. Right. See you yeah, soon. my pleasure. See ya. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the American Market Alchemist podcast. If you're ready to amplify your influence and scale your impact in the U.S. market, become a member of my newsletter community. You'll get weekly tips on LinkedIn strategy, personal branding, and digital marketing to write your U.S. success story. The link to get the newsletter is in the show notes. I'm Christina Robafe-Broadus, and I'll talk to you next time.